All right. Uh, welcome back to uh, school and <laughs> Sunderland School Committee uh, for uh, another year on uh, this Tuesday, September 19th. Uh, and uh, so to start, uh, we're one short today, as um, Michelle Tomlinson notified by email, she has resigned from school committee. Her uh, work commitments just make it uh, um, impossible to really fulfill. And it, that had, you know, she's had a number of conflicts because with her work schedules, just can't um, re reliably have this open. So, uh, so we will go through the process to fill that, which will start with notifying the select board, and and um, and then there'll be probably a, a meeting where we all will um, vote to a new person in. That's my understanding. So, all right. Uh, we appreciate Michelle's time here and, and what she did for us, and she did everything she could, and I appreciate her honesty, honestly. Um, uh, so. Um, and then moving on to the agenda for tonight. So starting with the minutes from June 19th, 2017. Anybody want to make a motion? motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. Second. Favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Uh, financial statements. So <clears throat> I sent to you um, two reports this month. The final FY17, which um, if you go to the last page of that report, the budget balance was zero. So we did expend down our budget in its entirety. Um, and then I sent you the FY18 budget, which uh, does not have the salaries encumbered yet because it's only through August. And uh, the, when we meet next, we'll have the um, salaries encumbered into that report. Uh, I did want to mention um, in FY17, and we're going to be talking about this more in detail, the final numbers for the cafeteria that came out of the general fund was we had uncollected lunch balances of $5,859.40 and a net program loss of $4,341.24. So a total of $10,200.44 came out of the general fund to subsidize the lunch program. Uh, you do have um, seven warrants to sign this evening for a total of $45,152.88. And that is all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Um, looks like. Give folks a minute. So, what, so use that final encumbrance on the 2017. What, how does that work? What's the that's so the the, the encumbrance works because we haven't at the time that we close the year we don't have the bills in yet. But we but we've got the those bills that we know we're gonna that's correct. Okay. So one that's of the warrants you signed tonight are actually FY17 bills. Right. They go on a separate warrant so the town knows to pay from the FY17 encumbrance line versus our FY18 budget. Okay. Perfect. That's what I thought. But just want to keep that, that separated. Okay. I don't have any questions. Questions, Greg? I mean, at some point, it'd be good to address uh, how we can make sure that the school launch for next year is uh, more stable. Yeah, we're going to think it's on the agenda, right? And I know, right? I was going to say it's on, yep, yeah. on the agenda tonight, at least the uh, first <laughs> chapter in that. Discussion in terms of uh, the report um, about that. So, okay, great, thank you. Um, public comment. I see none. Uh, unfinished business. So, uh, first on there is the um, student transportation policy EEA. This is the policy that I brought to you last June, and what it was about 
was when we, we have uh, Section 9 of uh, Policy EEA, when a child in the grades between K and 3, kindergarten and 3, are left off at a stop, this policy calls for all students, they will not be released from the vehicle, meaning the bus, unless a parent, guardian, or designated caregiver is there, is present to be responsible for the child. In actuality, we have been, uh, over the years, allowing <coughs> siblings in grade four or higher to take, to be with the little ones off the bus and bringing them into the house if they have guardian approval, parent or guardian approval. What we wanted to do was to add this um, stipulation in the policy so that it becomes practice, that what we're doing in practice equals what we have in our policy. So consequently, if a child is between the grades of K to three, if a parent is in the house down the road or you know around the corner, whatever, if they allow their fourth, fifth, or sixth grade student to walk the child home, and they give us written permission in our office, then it, it's allowed. The bus driver does not have to see the uh, the parent. <coughs> I mean, for some parents, that you know that's fine. That they're not that far from the bus anyway. Most of our uh, buses are pretty much individual stops. And I assume that's like that approval is just like on a, uh, a kind of ongoing basis, right? That's not like every day that the siblings going to do that. They have to. Well, if they do, they need to make sure that the office knows that so that. Um, okay. the, a note goes to the bus driver. Johnny can take and Johnny right. can get off the bus with Mary and walk Mary up the steps to okay. the house. Okay. And then uh, they have to be in fourth grade and above to do that. Um, and I know we want to uh, yeah. vote on that. This is our second time looking at this. Uh, so. Um, Want to can I get a motion and then we can discuss? So moved. Yep. Okay. Motion to approve uh, that policy and then a second. A second. Okay. Discussion. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, I know. Yeah. I, uh, I have experience with um, past practice, so <laughs> good to have policy in line with practice. So. Um, Thank you. Ed. All right. All in favor? Yeah. All the school committees, they're, yeah. yeah, it's, it's no-brainer. Yep. Great, thanks. Thank you. All right, new biz. Uh, summer building maintenance update. Who's that? We'll be done. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I included that in my principal's report, um, yeah. but and that's what everybody did. You could just read sure. off the main. Sure. Okay. Um, our custodial custodial staff was very busy over the summer, um, getting the school ready for the start of the new school year. Um, we had, with our growing size and the addition of a new preschool, we had to shuffle classrooms around a little bit. So our art and music room became the preschool classroom. Our OTPT room became the art room. The OTPT, um, the old extended preschool space in the back locker room area became the OTPT room and we mo moved music um, to share space with out of school time. So a big part of the summer was spent um, moving classes from one location in the building to the other. In addition to that, um, we had a crew from Frontier spend a couple weeks here in the building painting um, as, as the building has aged, um, and it's, the, the makeup is slightly different than the other schools in our district, whereas they um, have a lot of cinder block wear drywall. Um, so there's a lot of dings and dents when furniture is moved around. Um, so it was starting to look pretty tired in some areas, um, especially corners um, of hallways. So those are patched up and fixed and repaired. Um, and then overall, just general maintenance of washing and waxing floors. The um, highway department came in and uh, limbed up some of the trees in the parking lot. Um, so as you're pulling into the driveway, you'll notice a, a much um, clearer view of, of the parking lot for, you know, for safety reasons. 
That was pretty much it, but a lot. Yeah. So not it, just mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. I believe that the um, outside of the building was power washed. Yep. Some of the mildew and stuff was taken down, the uh, cobwebs, and um, they really went out back and they leveled off uh, a mound that was left from the uh, installation of the solar panels and they pl they mowed a lot of uh, overgrown business back there and they did a beautiful job and um, you know, we're, we're going to work hard to maintain the good work that was done and there were a lot of people that put their hands together to help out Sunderland to get it up to yeah, ready we, for the beginning. We added a, uh, um, a slop sink in the so again, slop sink in the kitchen area. Um, prior to that, the only one was down on this end of the building. So if there was a cleanup needed in the east end of the building, um, our custodial staff had to, would have to come all the way down here um, to fill their bucket. So it's a time saver. Um, and it makes sense because, you know, we're washing the cafeteria every day also. Great, thanks. Uh, uh, summer programs. Is that uh, also you? Sure. I'm guessing. Yeah. By all this, so you probably have in your principal's report. I did not have that in okay. the principal's report, but our district was, um, we were very busy district wide um, with all of the summer programs that were taking place. We had a, a reading and math camp taking place at Deerfield Elementary School. Um, there is a STEM camp offered towards the end of the summer uh, at Waitley Elementary School, and that was actually um, put on by our kindergarten teacher, Cialantes, our fourth grade teacher, Donna Carmody, and our sixth grade teacher, Ryan Copeland. And the, um, the hope is that it, it uh, really gains popularity. There was around 30 students um, in the coming summers um, so that more students are involved with it. We had our normal Horizon Summer program for kids who qualify for extended day, uh, extended school day services. Um, there is a, a kind of a, a soft opening for some of our pre-K students and who need extra, extra support. Um, you know, as you know, we transitioned to a full day preschool this year, and that's also included in my report. But we have a full day three three year old program and a full day four year old program and to make that transition easier for those students. Um, we had a preschool summer program here at Sunderland. Was that the Ladybug Camp? Uh, that was separate from the Ladybug Camp. There was a another there was also a district wide Ladybug Camp for some. Then I camps. believe that was in Conway. Yeah. Yeah. And we also had writing camp at Deerfield. Yeah. The, the Ladybug Camp is part of the reading camp for the pre-Ks, they call it Ladybug mm -hmm. Camp. And um, it, it was absolutely adorable. But they had some very cute stuff going on here too. The students were here pretty much all summer. Yeah. Six weeks. Yeah. And uh, From July every time 5th, they came by, they were so sleeping. Long. The little babies yeah. were just resting, you know, holding out their hands to one another and trying to rest. Very cute. <laughs> really cute. Great. Yeah. Thanks. And then uh, personnel update. It's on the back of the oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Um, the the one position that has the highest turnover of staff each year is our instructional assistants, um, and that um, was the case again once again this summer. Um, we have hired. Uh, six or uh, six new instructional assistants. Elizabeth Antes is working in our first grade classroom with Susie Wells. Uh, Jessica Callahan is working in our Horizons program. Lorna Cook was actually she was a, a mid-year hire last year, and I, and I didn't include her in the opening day report, so I wanted to make sure she was included. Um, Don Haskins um, is working in the sixth grade. Kirsten Matson is working in the along with Selena Spearing, um, they're working in the Horizons program as well. Last, uh, last January, our um, district-wide occupational therapist, or district-wide from Waitley, Frontier, and Sunderland, resigned, and Jasmine Delsey was brought on as a long-term sub, um, and now she's been hired uh, full-time between those three schools. Um, additionally, last year we had a um, speech and language pathologist assistant working in our school, but due to the size of the caseload, 
um, and the needs of the students, uh, it made sense to bring on a certified speech and language pathologist, and that's Catlin Converse. Um, and so she's working alongside our other speech and language pathologist, Carolyn Burns. Um, we've started the school year with a few different tutors. Um, Jayshree Kirsch, Kirshnin is supporting a preschool student um, uh, who speaks Tamil. Um, it's a, a dialect of Indian from Southern India. Um, Ziomara Rosa and Claudia Rosa are, are Spanish tutors. Minju, Minju Yi is a volunteer working with one of our Korean students. And Landry uh, Kawawu uh, is working with a student who just uh, moved from France. is the um, MASC-MASS Joint Conference designation of official delegate. Is there anyone from the school committee going? Last year, Michelle, Michelle went. Right. Um, it's in November. It's about three days, two days. Yeah. Um, it's, not not, it, it's not imperative, but if there was anyone going, it's getting late. We, you know, we need to sign you up and, and hopefully you can find a hotel room. But if you were going, you would... Then get to the hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we have... Some, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good... It is... It's, it's a good conference. It really is. It's tough. Well, I'll tough. be here and I'll report um, on it. All right. Yeah. The, the midweek days are different. Yeah. Yes, the day are especially. I can understand that. Um, all right. Well, if we get if somebody decides in October, you know, then we can always presumably get a delegate. Or is it is this is the deadline for the delegates I think, coming? Up? I think the deadline is coming up, and um, that, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, it's October twentieth, okay. so we still have time. Okay. Um, but I mean, it's the fifth. Okay. Yeah. So it goes. Do it in October if somebody decided. Ah, I don't really want to go. <laughs> Super. All right. Review of the food service report. So I'd like to introduce um, Flory Page. She's worked, she's our interim food service director consultant slash consultant. And she's worked at Deerfield Academy for 29 years as the head of the food service there. She's working with a company in New, out of New York that consults. It's called Foodie. Consultants. No, that's, that's my company here, Fifth oh. Consultant. Okay, so she's, and she lives in Deerfield. She's a Deerfield resident, so she knows our district well. And she's going to talk a little bit about some of the changes that we put in place. Essentially, we um, had to um, cut some of the hours that of the people that were working were trying to, to save some money, and, and part of that was we didn't want we couldn't pay someone to work over the summer. Uh, so we cut those hours and then someone retired and then now we are in the business of shifting what we're doing. We're hoping to get all five schools together to have one district uh, director of food services, much like we have a direct district director of business, facilities, special ed, so they would come out of the central office, but they would. There's just a lot more power in purchasing and, um, you know, laying, um, purchasing and making policies in the kitchen, uh, serving the uh, the lunches. That would be the menus would be more uh, consistent. And I'm looking for my wonderful list of things, and it's here, and I'll find it after. Why don't I give a little summary of the report, yeah. and then we can have Flory tell us what we did. So <clears throat> prior to Flory uh, joining us, and Flory was recommended to us by the people who did this report, which was uh, JAH Associates, uh, Jim Halstead, who is out of Connecticut and has over 40 years of food service, uh, both in public and private. Um, so we had him come in and take a look at all of our programs. and. 
he hit some key areas that we need to increase our revenue, which means increasing our participation. Um, and in order to do that, um, we, we've got to appeal to our audience, which are children. They're very visual eaters, so we need to work with presentation um, and things like that. And we also need to decrease, while increasing our revenue, we need to decrease both our food costs and our labor costs. Um, we are not making effective use of our commodities, which are free foods that we get from the government. So by doing the menu planning um, and bulk purchasing and using a, a thing called diversion, we'd be able to get more, we'd be able to stretch our food dollars further. And uh, a quick explanation on what diversion is, is that we could get uh, chicken or ground beef from the, the federal government. Well, we always just take the ground beef or the chicken. Well, what we could do is divert the chicken and get chicken nuggets made out of it instead of having to purchase chicken nuggets. We could divert the chicken. Uh, instead of always serving spaghetti with meat sauce, we could divert some of our ground beef and have meatballs because we all know kids love spaghetti and meatballs and they might eat that more, um, they are apt to eat that rather than spaghetti with meat sauce. Um, we'd also want to do um, some financial oversight as far as making sure that our claims uh, for our free and reduced are maximized. Um, our collections, we really have to work harder on our collections. And part of the collections uh, process is also getting the principal involved because if we see families that are consistently not able to pay for their lunch, then the principal needs to sit down with that family and say, hey, do you need some help? We can fill out a free and reduced application because I think parents have this misconception that they can only apply for free and reduced at the beginning of every school year. And if something happens in the family mid-year, Anytime your financial circumstances change, you can always fill out a free and reduce. But at that point, we usually have the principal intervene. Uh, so those are some of the points that, um, and our labor costs needed to come down. Here at Sunderland, it wasn't so much the labor costs, it was more the food costs. Um, so we really want to do the menu planning and doing the bulk purchasing. And the, the purchasing is getting more difficult because even though we bid, I'll give you a prime example. Um, right now, we cannot get a one five pound um, container of cottage cheese. We have to buy five five pound containers. Well, no one school needs 25 pounds of cottage cheese. So if we are able to purchase for everyone and distribute and charge accordingly, we, we could save some money. Um, so that's the overview. And um, we were, this came to us at the end of the year and we didn't want to rush out and hire someone because A, we don't know what that person looks like. We don't have a good job description. So the consultant recommended that we hire someone interim to help us figure out who it is we need, identify who it is we need, and put some procedures in place because nothing is documented. So enter Mrs. Page, and I'm going to let her take it from here. So I've been very busy since I came on board with planning menus and getting to know everyone. And in the report that you've read, I'm sure Jim recommended that we evaluate the number of meals produced per man hour, which is a, an industry standard calculation to judge the efficiency of the employees. And our numbers were woefully low. Generally, they're between 15 and 20. And the average in all of our schools was closer to six. So we're working on evaluating the performance of the employees and um, not so much not so much their performance, but structuring their time so that they'll have a better understanding of what needs to be done and looking at schedules to be sure that we have worked the schedules around the needs of the program so that we are efficiently staffed as opposed to staffed at times that, say, an employee was able to work for us. We now are dictating when we need someone. In fact, Ben and I talked with a lovely grandmother today who's we're hoping is going to be able to come in and operate the cash register just during lunchtime when we have a peak two-hour shift and that's looking pretty promising. Um, the employees are much more involved in the program. Right now we have the USDA foods list in front of us and as Patty mentioned, they would order kind of similar things all the time. And here they had a surplus of hamburg. So to have meatballs would be a great thing. The commodity list doesn't offer, ham doesn't offer meatballs, but the kids love them not just with spaghetti, but also in, a, in a, a grinder. So we're looking at doing some of those things and having the, the people actually participate as well. The other very exciting thing that's happened here is that we now have a point of sale system here. So Sunderland Elementary School is connected to the network that's connected, connecting all of the children. So at any given time, I can run a report for Ben and let him know who has a balance due and what that balance is. I've been running it pretty much weekly for all the principals so that they can keep track of what the, the past due balances look like. 
And so parents can find out what their child has spent and what their balances are. I think that at this point it's looking much more promising as we don't have even a month under our belt yet, but it's looking as if people are, are appreciating that opportunity to be able to follow up on what, where their child stands with that program. I think that's pretty much my, my summary. I'm excited to be here and there's lots to do. We have, um, today we had some delicious um, meatloaf. It was incredible. We have had had turkey. We had Philly steak sandwiches with onions and peppers that were just out of the world, out of this world. So things are really, um, though the, the quality and the presentation and the variety is really wonderful. I was going to say, uh, my, I have a daughter at Frontier who actually commented, what's going on with the lunches? They look, they look better. She, I mean, yeah, that's really that's uncharacteristic that's thing for a teenager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. We, um, when Flory and I met over the summer, we, we discussed um, trying to produce more meals from scratch. And, you know, rather than just taking something out of the freezer and heating it up and serving, um, kind of an empowering our cafeteria employees to make these meals and, and take more ownership on that. Um, and even after the first day of school, um, I had a parent um, call me in the office and just, she just gave raving reviews. So that's, you know, a testament to the work um, that not only that Flory has done, but the administration at central office for helping to facilitate that, but then our, our cafeteria workers as well. Um, you remember a couple years ago we did a, a school lunch survey for our students and that's being developed and it's going to go out again um, you know from, from my understanding that you know as we look to possibly move towards a district-wide food service director there there might still be a, a little bit of local control you know whether it's with the soups or individual meals and you know each each of us has our own area of expertise, you know, in the kitchen. In the kitchen, so if if one school is feeling empowered to cook a certain meal, you know, we, we want to have that option as as well. I've been very pleasantly surprised at the skill level of the staff, looking at the menus and hearing the comments from the customers, and students, and faculty alike. I didn't really know what to expect, and I'm very pleased that the, the workers at all of the schools have a. a significant skill level as far as cooking and I think are pleased to not just be opening boxes but actually cooking. So. And one of the other, one the last comment I want to make um, that Flory has done an outstanding job is that we always brought we always purchased a lot of our fruit locally. But Flory has gone out now and she's trying to you know purchase our produce, our fr fresh vegetables rather than using the processed um, or frozen vegetables. So she's been trying to make uh, vendor relations with our with our local um, produce uh, producers. Mm -hmm. So and to me that's really important because we're right in the middle. I mean we're in Franklin County. We've got so many farms around us, and there's just you know developing those relationships. I think are extremely important. Um, I have a few questions, and uh, you've been kind of anticipated, partly anticipated one of them in terms of like that survey that you mentioned, because um, I still remember uh, that uh, my girls here were in an after-school program, uh, and they did uh, where they were doing cooking, and what they were willing to try when they were involved in the process. You know, like it was, you know, it, it, it was a lesson <laughs> to, to my, me and my wife about, okay, maybe we should, uh, you know, get the girls involved more if we want them to eat some of these things that we're asking them to eat. Um, and get enthusiastic, I mean, not just do it, but enthusiastic about it. Like coming home, oh, you, we, got, we got to do this broccoli. You know, it's like, do I know you? <laughs> so, you know, just wondering, what kinds of opportunities there are for the kids to be involved like this kind of like you know maybe even beyond you know survey like to, them getting involved to some extent in like feeling like some ownership in the menu or or whatever that then is going to make them more likely to participate along with all these other initiatives 
to the do thing, that. The other thing the, kid, the kids really enjoy doing is growing food, and yeah. they are so willing to try things that you wouldn't be able to force across their lips if you had bought yeah. it at the grocery store, but if they've watched that seedling grow on the windowsill in a Dixie cup and turn into something that they can eat in the cafeteria, they're much more yeah. excited about it. So yeah. it, it's kind of from start to finish, yeah. taking in that whole picture really encourages them. And I, and I think that's a piece that's been missing, the connection. Um, other districts that I've been in, we've, um, and usually at the, at the high school level when they're taking health and nutrition, where we have a contest where the students develop a menu and mm -hmm. that they, they make sure that it's nutritionally sound and um, people vote for the different menus, like who's, who, whose menu was the best, and then we would have, actually have the kitchen staff prepare it. And um, So there are some tie-ins that we can do. And um, I think that the educational piece, as you're saying, Mr. Fulton was was missing, and I think there's a lot of um, opportunities. We just got to play 60 grant in the in Deerfield Elementary, and there was a lot of activities that are connected to that, um, uh, such as adding a new food. So they're going to be adding a smoothie to their menu because it was New England dairy, and they have to add a PE exercise. So we're going to get the PE teachers involved in how to become, you know, not just eat healthy but keep moving. So there, there's a lot of opportunities, and I'm hoping that when, with, with one person, we'd be able to and work with our principals and our staff to tie that in. Yeah. USDA cool. has some great curriculum opportunities out there as well, and because yeah. we participate in their national programs, the material is free to us, yeah. and it's comprehensive lesson planning from activities to classroom involvement <coughs> outside of school things with lots of really kid-friendly products. It's, a, it's terrific. Yeah. We can talk some more about that. I know teachers have lots of things to <laughs> work into their day, um, but I imagine to the extent there are opportunities like that, that a lot of them are probably interested in sure. you know, with the, where they fit into the educational curriculum that they're doing and so on. Maybe that can help us in terms of getting participation out. It's very, focused, it's very focused on the Common Core as well, so even though yeah. it's yeah. cartoons and coloring yeah. books and that, right. for the younger children, but there is definitely a, a consistent yeah. focus. And I do remind me, and I should take a minute and, and, and um, thank Deb Zanowski, who did retire after many years of committed service to the school and did uh, take on some things like the uh, farm to table initiatives. And when we told her, uh, you know, we're gonna, there's going to be a, a load of potatoes that's going to show up and kids are going to be doing this and then it's going to come into your kitchen and, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, she, she looked at us kind of scans at first but you know then then smiled and came around and got in and was in it with the kids and and um so you know appreciate some of the steps we took and i'm looking forward to you know where we can go from here and um uh, so yeah it would be great you know to have um you know 90 percent you know the, i mean i don't want to be too unrealistic but <laughs> um <coughs> but as a parent you know i mean most parents don't want to be making their kids lunch every morning with all the other craziness going on in the morning. So um, I'm sure, like, you know, with all this stuff, if we can sell it to the kids and sell it to the parents, and, and that, I guess that is the other piece of it when I was talking about, like, their involvement, because their involvement in healthy decisions, too, you know, so that it isn't like, yeah, I mean, if, if, if we just said, okay, you get to design the menu, of course, it's going to, okay, we're going to have cookies and we're going to have it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they, have the, they have to follow those USDA guidelines, too. But then, so right, to, learning to learn that, right. to learn and then take ownership of that, and then, and so then, um, them bought in and the parents bought in, and, you know, so look forward to more updates. I'm sorry, oh, yeah, yeah please. comments and questions. So, our family's very happy with the changes, I have to say. Um, and I've heard from other parents as well, have noticed in, our, in a good way and are happy. I just had a question about the point of sale system. Um, can parents access that now? Like say, yeah, Not see, yet. I think that's really gonna help with getting the bills paid because so, <clears throat> I have a kiddo who I send with a lunch, I literally lost her lunch at school, in the classroom lost her lunch and had to buy a lunch. <laughs> the, 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 the issue we're looking at is that because we are not regionalized. I have to work with each town treasurer and, that, and the module that comes with the Meals Plus will charge you $1.95 per transaction, which I think is kind of high. But if we went with what the town uses, the transaction cost would go down, but then you would, we would lose the 
we would lose the ability for you to look to see what days they had the right. lunch. So I think that's going to be something that Flory and I work on um, with our IT director and also do a parent survey. Would you rather lower fees and just make the payments or would you pay a higher fee so that you can see the days your children ate? And, and also to be able to pay right. directly online. Right. Huge. Right now, the parent can look at a report. I was over in Whateley today, and the cashier at the register was able to run a report for a parent with all of the transactions that have taken place in the child's accounts since school started. So it can happen right at the school level with the cashier doing it for a parent and send home the printed copy or pick it up. So we're, we're getting to have more yeah, information available, but we're not quite there yet. Unintentionally unpaid bills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we definitely have a... a a good handle on that, so a, a phone call or an email can yeah. get you whatever information you're looking for. And ultimately, it would be nice to have you be able to get it for yourself. So, PLS is from that. So, this year, but it's not a big product we're going to have to do online payments. So, we have it installed so that we are correctly calculating the number of lunches that we're serving um, and at what, whether they're free, reduced, or full pay. Um, so, it's giving us a lot of good data to help us make sure that we maximize our claims. Um, and it's giving us good data in that we should be able to spit out almost weekly um, backpack letters for parents to say, this is your bill. And instead of doing it once a month, I, I'm hoping we do it once a week. And I'm hoping, you know, um, but the one piece that we still have to work out is the online payment piece because we have to decide, are we going with Mills Plus or are we going with the town of Sunday when like you pay your tax bills? So the kid's paying cash right now at the or point. Check. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So no, not at the point of sale. They usually pay in home room and the money comes down and then we okay. record it. Would, there ever, would we ever be going to like a prepay account? That yes. Would, that's the direction we're they going. Do it. Parents will do that now. Sometimes parents will just give us a check for $200 okay. and they put that money on their child's account. And then we we give we should we send them you know they use this much this much this much this is how much you still have a credit or now you owe us and then they'll throw us another check for a couple hundred bucks you know or some pay, some parents pay uh, weekly because they only have their students eat two or three days pick two or three days that you're going to eat this week and they pay weekly so um, and then we have those that don't pay <laughs> and the kids have a little ID card that they pick up when they get to the cafeteria and scan at the cash register and then return to the cafeteria. So the little ID card stays in the cafeteria, but there is a picture ID card for each child. I just wanted to say, I remember the early discussion, but one of the challenges we had, I know here at Sunderland, was getting the kids through the line, because the more you've got a fixed block of time, the more time they spend in line, the less time they have uh, to eat. We're still working hard on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and if your enrollment goes up, that's, that's only right. going to get more challenging. So that's, that's that by grade, they recommended in the report that we could cut two hours, but we felt that that, that we, we could do a better job focusing on lowering the food cost because we don't want to. We, and that's why we were interviewing for the two-hour position because the person that previously did it, we shared as a Frontier employee, and now they're doing all their hours at Frontier. So that's why we have a vacancy for the two hours because even though it was recommended that we probably could, that, could cut down, we we didn't want a, a lunch you know a lunch line jam so we are going ahead and leaving the labor costs as is and focusing here really on our food costs and increasing our revenue and our collections so that'll fix the finance but then fixing the time right. we, we, we've made a few changes already one of the things that i observed was that the children pre-ordered their lunches also but a list comes down on a piece of paper <coughs> and the food service worker, her name's Angie, had the list taped across the front of the steam table. So as the child came in, most of the kids she knew, but I, I was there when she was doing the younger kids that she didn't know as well. So she had to ask them their name, she had to find them on the list, she had to find them on which list because the children were not lined up according to class. So the thing that we made a change with right away was having them get in line with their class. And if you cut in line, it doesn't help you, it doesn't help us, so stay with your class. And then she's just looking at that one page at a time and the ID card does have the child's picture on it, so if the child is saying, uh, uh, you pull up the card, you can see who the child is. So we definitely are working toward that. And the third person is really going to be to facilitate getting the, the salad served and the child moved through the line and questions answered and that sort of thing. So we're working on it, and it, it definitely is a, a process, but we want to give them time to eat. We've got a great situation with recess first and then lunch and adequate time for lunch. We don't want to waste that time standing in line. And the, the salad bar area is still somewhat of an issue. That particular part of the lunch line is meant, it's like a dessert tray in, in a way, so it's really difficult for the students and or staff for that matter to actually reach the vegetables and use 
you know, the tongs and take out your carrots and then slowly move on to the cucumbers and then the pasta salad. So, um, and there are a lot of choices there. And there are a lot of choices. And there are a lot of choices. So, um, we're looking into a couple grants um, for a new salad bar. Um, we're working with um, a Sunderland parent. Um, she's helping us with that as well. So, either moving the salad bar to another location in the kitchen where the um, milk where the milk free freezer or milk cooler is right now and relocating the milk cooler so that there's you know two sides to the salad bar after the hot lunch Brilliant. yeah so it's still the, the lunch the amount of time and even despite these changes we've made <coughs> the amount of time the students are spending in line is still too long it's still too long so we need to shore that up So then we vote in the October meeting um, to have uh, everyone have a, a, we will be asking you to vote for a uh, district-wide food service director position. Um, so I liked the uh, trying to increase participation by having certain days in the cafeteria, the, the star tray, birthdays theme, I think it is very positive, and especially at this age, they'll, they'll connect to that. The question I, I do have, um, and I've heard some references to this, when I first read it, it was, my, one of my reactions was, reduce hours and produce more. And that could easily be, you're not working hard enough to the cafeteria staff. So Sunderland specifically, but we're not cutting, but in the district in general, how have the kitchen staffs uh, reacted to this and how have we brought them on board so that this is a positive working experience for all of them? I think that the cafeteria staff were surprised at the amount of money that they, the schools had lost and the role that they played in it. And my effort has been to involve them in the decision making to have them understand, understand the meals per man hour is a measure that we can do every month and discuss and compare. And that bringing, producing more appetizing food and presenting it to the customers is going to increase sales and increasing sales solves basically all of, I don't want to be simplistic and say all of the problems, but more volume makes a huge difference. <coughs> and as I said, they've risen to the occasion. They're excited about actually cooking as opposed to just opening boxes. And I think that they weren't involved in a lot of the decision making in the past. So it's been a little challenging for them initially when I would ask, well, what do you think about this? Is this a test? What's going to happen if I say the wrong answer? They're coming around to accepting the fact that they need to respond and say, well, in the past we did this, but I would like to try this, or I make this at home, or could we do it this way? And they, they're definitely coming around and being more involved because we want them to have ownership of the program. And I think we're all times. The more empowered they are, the more productive they'll be, and the happier they'll be. And then I'm assuming that the position that we're going to be hiring would facilitate some way for the four or five schools to communicate, the, the lunch staff to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So if there are, are levels of success or things that we see working that we can implement them in the other schools as well. We, and we've had them together this fall doing training with the point of sale system and talking about the program and the objectives as well. So what you're saying for October would be to to uh, approve having a, that, a single position as opposed to multiple? Correct. Okay. And are there, have there been, you know, objections to that that have been raised so far by uh, whether yeah, staff or? Thursday. Okay. <laughs> but and even aside from school committee, I mean, just on the ground, um, whether, whether, yeah. Mm -hmm. Principals or, or or staff or I think our principals are in full support of this yes. um, because they've already seen the changes already mm -hmm. um, and um, and the more that we do for them the the, the less that we the, the more that we can do and make the pr program successful that's the less phone calls that they're going to get and mm -hmm. um, so I think they've been ha I won't speak for Ben but I think they've been happy so far with the, with the, the small progress that we've made. Mm -hmm. Right, and, I, and I, I think it's almost, like you could almost compare it to teaching in, in a way also, like providing teachers with you know, the flexibility to present a certain component of the curriculum rather than saying on, on this day you have to be on this page 
and teaching this exact same lesson. Well, if the teacher has another resource where he or she feels that can reach the students in a better way, you know, it's, it's similar, similar to this, giving our cafeteria workers that flexibility <coughs> to do what they want at times and, and have, some, have some control over the menu. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All, all of the schools enjoy doing that, and it's a great cost savings measure. And they produce some pretty yummy soup. I mean, it seems like the one potential you know, downside, and I'm just putting it out there now, so like, it, 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 you know, it uh, doesn't come like last minute, and, uh, but, but um, would be where, you know, if you had somebody, and you always had somebody in your building, and then like, so when you feel like there's a problem you want to get to right away, that person's there, as opposed to if there's one person for the district, now, mm -hmm. you know, you're contending for that time if you're like the, the, the principal sure. or whatever, which I think, you know, I can see that being offset by the advantages of it and financial advantages, but I just want to kind of throw that out there. But we've been, sh we've had three schools three. sharing one person for about four or five years now. So yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, yeah. it's just adding the additional two schools, which, um, and, and, and part of the structure that we've talked about too it, um, in preliminary conversations uh, as Dr. Carey and um, Flory and I have been talking is that we'd have like the food service director, we'd probably have a lead per, a team leader in each building and then our food service workers. So we're not adding a layer because these people already exist, but we're going to make them responsible to be the team leader because you're right, uh, Flory, you know, Flory or whoever the person will be can't be in five spots at one time. Right. And, and again, like um, Flory said, we've already, for the first time, we brought everybody together and it was a really rewarding um, uh, meeting. Uh, there was some pushback, of course, but um, we're encouraging everybody to have get, put your feedback in, try to make it positive, um, and, and, and be a contributing team member uh, to this process. And I, I think Floria has done a great job paving that road. And they love the comments that you all have been making. And of course, I'm going to go back to them tomorrow and say, so, we went to the school committee meeting last night, and here's what they had to say. And the kids come through the line and make comments to them, and the faculty do it. That's so rewarding for them. It probably makes up for a little extra chatty break time that they're not getting anymore to hear those comments from the, the kids and from the, the staff, so. Where are we at participation? Yeah, just to get a benchmark. Your, your breakfast numbers are really disappointing. In fact, Ben and I had a conversation this afternoon about breakfast because you are required to offer breakfast here because of the number of free and reduced children you have. Yeah. And we're not doing more than about two to three, 25 to 30 kids on a given day for breakfast. And the breakfast menu has changed dramatically. Instead of offering a sorted of everything, we now have a specific menu, a certain kind of fruit, a certain kind of breakfast. They had Belgian waffle sticks the other day that are not that are not ego waffles. They're like Belgian waffles. And we've tried to improve the quality and identify what the food is going to be so that they know. I would really, really like to see more kids come to breakfast if we're required to do it because of our number of free kids. We'd like to have all the free kids and others besides come to breakfast. Your lunch numbers are creeping up. It's early still, but yeah. I think that they're moving forward. And, and on that note, as, as the year progresses, we'll see more changes made to the menu. Yeah, I'm the, the, yeah, the reason I'm, I'm kind of to get a benchmark now for where we're at now and then like where we get to as we go through the year. Um, so you, do you, you don't have a percent on the where we're at lunch I just looked at it over the weekend and it's not okay, that's all right. My head is that's talking, right. so if you want to leave me a card, I can email you the statistics I'll get, I'll that I worked yeah, on yeah, yeah, I should have brought the report with that's me, okay. and I didn't grab it when I was leaving. So we do have some numbers, but even to go back, what I've been doing thus far is comparing to last year's numbers, because yep. I have every month's yep. claim form that I can look what the percentage great, was yeah. last year and compare it to where we are this year. Right. And we will be doing that monthly, both with the participation numbers and with the productivity numbers from the staff, that meals per man hour number. Great. Can we do uh, outreach to be eligible for breakfast but aren't participating at all? Um, let them know that the offer, that the opportunity is there. Well, you can't talk to everyone, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you let everybody know because you can't yeah. identify. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's available. Maybe we should send some yeah. pictures of those Belgian yeah, waffles. <laughs> 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 the follow-up question was, do we still have pancake in a bag? No, 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 no,
But we don't exit from the front. Okay, for, for, lunch. for lunch. For lunch. For lunch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and, and I think on, on that point, Keith, you know, another thing that we can do on our end is talk about some of the changes that, that have been made in the cafeteria. So it's not just word of mouth from the kids, but also mm -hmm. coming in written, you know, written form from the, from the administration and the food program, just yes, so parents are seeing that. And we'll talk about it at open house mm -hmm. as well. And certainly if the numbers increase, we would be able to make pancakes to order as the kids come through the line, but with only two dozen kids, it's tough to do that setup. So we're looking for appealing, delicious things that can be easily served to a small number, but I'd love to see that number be bigger, which would give us so much more opportunity. The, I have to tell you again, the meatloaf today was, it was <laughs> incredible. It, it, and that's, the that ground, that's that ground beef that Patty and I were both talking about being kind of surplus and yep. what do you do with it? It goes into meat sauce and so it's been so a challenge. So today they made scratch meatloaf out of the ground hamburg from the government. It's so really good. good. For, oh, that, that was done here? But it was done everywhere. Okay. But, uh, but I mean, but, you, but the meatloaf was made here? Or was this, okay, because in the other case, it sounds like, is where that diversion lost. thing, right? You, right. you so, get it. So, so, so we, can opt it, it, we can opt to have the Hamburg right. taken. Instead of sent to us, they can send it to a manufacturer like right. um, Chef Pierre, and they will manufacture the meatballs. And this is a right. small fee for them doing that right. service for us. But the meat was free to start with, and so they, we get the meatballs the meat for. So it'd be a lot less than if we were right. otherwise. Yeah. Very significant. It's a, a small handling charge and a small fee from them. So same thing with the chicken nuggets. The chicken nuggets that we get are, poor, you know, they're they're probably not the best quality. They're probably not the worst quality. But if we if we take the chicken breast and and take that and divert it to Tyson and have them make us whole breast chicken nuggets, the kids are going to like that a lot better. Although on this month's list, there's not a ch there's chicken breasts are not available. Oh, but, oh, but of course. Take but, them away and get it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I think having the food service workers look at it and kind of brainstorm what they can do with it and what we can put on the menu using those items is, is really helpful for lots of reasons. It, it's made right. at each school. It's not <coughs> made at Frontier and then sent to the schools. Each school <coughs> scratch cooks, you know, cooks their, for their own people, which is really good. Um, if we if we were going to go the completely other way and go with a company or something, they would do all the cooking off-site and then we would get very mediocre, uh, nothing like what we're getting now, and uh, we don't want to go there. That's not us. So. Any other questions or comments? Just stupid. Uh Trying to understand the breakfast serving hours versus the bus arrival. Hours. <clears throat> Do people understand that? Um, we start staffing outside the building at 8.20, okay. um, and that's actually when the breakfast starts as well. Um, on paper, breakfast is 8.20 to 8.40, but if the bus comes at 8.35 and the kids are just getting down there, we'll give them enough time to eat and also have, give them the option of taking their breakfast back to the classroom. Got it. Anything else? Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for it. All right, our last bit of new business is a designation of policy review subcommittee member. Um, this was, was this what um, Greg had done pre yes, yeah. previously? So what happened in the interim um, last year? So the year before I came on, Marty Barrett went through all the policies and updated them all, did a beautiful job. The policy committee worked really hard. So last year, there were no new policies, but the um, Massachusetts Association of School Committees, with the new laws and all the new things, um, actually has um, sent us a list, quite a list. Some are just words, some are just sentences, some are very similar to what we did tonight. And some of them need to be removed, but they gave us a list of changes to keep up with the current laws. Mm -hmm. And so I need to ask for a person to serve on the subcommittee. I believe they used to meet at 5.30 um, in the 
in the evening, perhaps in the evening we don't have a school committee meeting, that I don't have one of many school committee meetings to go to. And so I need to ask someone from Sunderland to be part of that again, and we're hoping we'll have fun doing it, but it looks like there's a lot. And this is all stuff that's just been passed along from them? It came out in July or August, and the list has been sitting um, okay. on my desk. And, and then we have the one new policy, which is we, we were told by Desi we have to have, when we had the uh, cafeteria reviews, we need to have a meals charging policy, which we don't currently have. So that new policy has to be developed and adopted by all the school committees. Okay. So that's where we are right now. And so if there's anyone that can meet at 5.30 in the evening once a month, is there anyone that, well, it's uh, not Greg, you must still Volunteers? Be <laughs> I wouldn't want to steal the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fun. I mean, so that's funny. Um, yeah, yeah. Great. Well, we need to. You're willing to do it, right? Hold on, hold on. Thank you. I mean, Thank you. Um, I know it's a, a lot of work. I know you put in a lot last time. You probably, and because of that, um, have a head start on the rest of us, which uh, <laughs> is a shameless excuse for <laughs> <laughs> accepting your <laughs> nomination. Uh, so we vote on that. Um, I guess. Uh, and, um, yeah, all in favor? Who made the motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Keith. Who'll second, second it? Second it. <laughs> thank you, Doug. And, and thank Thanks. you very Thanks, much. Chris. And I, I'll, I honestly will make it as painless as possible. Some of the, some of the things are simple wording like um, replacing the word handicap with disability which of course we're all upgrading our our knowledge and our understanding and our, our vocabulary and you know some of them are a little bit more complex but most of them are very similar to the one we did tonight so um, i appreciate that thank you great all right so any business so reports um i don't imagine any committees yet am i correct um and uh, do I, I forget, do we do um, frontier like updates? I know, because I know you on the frontier. Do we do that? I guess we should, it's probably good practice. You never asked me that. Yeah. <laughs> the now, one meeting he missed. Yeah. Didn't go last week. Oh, OK. Oh, couldn't right. make it. Well, we'll get an update next next month. I'll, I'll give updates from now. We'll, right. uh, we'll all be together next month. Right. Here's my update. Done. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to do is ask about having one person having uh, a food service. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, uh, then, then it's uh, principal. Then. Great. I've already gone over most of my report um, with the summer building work, um, preschool, that, uh, which was included, I talked a little bit about in our um, summer programs. Um, our full day preschool also has an after school option for families and that goes until 5.30 each day. Um, if you flip onto the back side, we had our first all school sing of the school year. Um, that's a, an assembly where the entire school gets together, um, goes reviews school wide expectations, it's for celebrations and um, it's a sing along as well. Um, early release started last week we had just over 60 students um, stay for the aftercare option. On September 30th, we have the Farmy Fresh and Fun Fair um, located behind the Sunderland Public Library. Uh, there's gonna be a children's farmer's market, market bounce house, carnival games, and more. Um, many of our local farming families um, donate food for the children's farmer's market. And um, I'm hoping to have a list to publicly thank those at, for our next meeting. Um, first school council meeting this year is on Monday, October 2nd. Uh, open house is on the 3rd. We have our fall walk and roll day on this October 6th. Picture day on October 11th. Um, PTO meetings on the week of August 23rd. We have um, Zara Lawler and Paul Fadul 
coming to all the elementary schools for a musical residency. Um, uh, Miss Lawler is a flautist and uh, Mr. Fadul play is a marimbatist. Um, so they'll be working with all our kids on October 24th. And then we have a Veterans Day Observance Ceremony on November 9th, and that's our an annual cer ceremony that takes place at our town memorial. And that's about it. The school council meeting, is that the, the group we didn't have it before? Is that right? We, we, no, this is no we, we, did, we did have it. Um, okay. We did have it. We weren't um, active with the meetings last year, okay. but we were still um, checking things off of our school improvement plan, Okay. Um, which went through last year. So um, we're in the process of drafting a new school improvement plan um, that is based off of a couple different things, both um, district um, sponsored and DESE audits, um, as well as some local school goals as, as well. And I, you don't need to name names, I, I guess, if the positions would be better. Who makes up the school council? Who's on it? Sure. Um, staff members, principal, um, a representative from the school committee, and that's Maisie, um, parents, and community members. Parents are um, voted on by fellow parents, and recently we sent out um, letters home in backpacks, and parents had a chance to submit letters of interest. Um, those are going to go out. We've received two folks so far who are interested. Mm -hmm. Those will go out through Google Forms um, survey, so the parent community can vote for the two open seats that we have. Um, and there's an, so there's an equal representation of parents to school members. So as of now, it'd be like two teachers, two yeah, maybe two parents, and community members. Right now, we have one community member lined up and we're looking for another one as well. The community members are appointed by the principal um, and the other positions are voted on by staff and families. Okay. Um, can you just run through the, the numbers for me I just so I can get it clear? We had two pre-K classes? The only grades that we have one class are third grade and fifth grade. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but our enrollment numbers are down from last year. We're in the 230s right now, and we we're finished close to 260 last year. We, um, we anticipated a lot of um, folks moving into town over the summer, especially at the kindergarten level which had been the trend over the past couple of years, and that, yeah. that was not the case. Mm -hmm. um, so we did have a couple, but not as many. We had a couple school-wide across um, all the grades, but not, not a ton. I think as we talked about, though, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough business, right. <laughs> these predictions, and it's more trouble when we uh, overshoot, you know, and, uh, you know, on our, our um, choice slots that we do and end up with a class where, again, where we've, we we tried right. to, you know, take a, a, a situation and, and fill in with choice for, uh, um, since we we're going to have two classrooms anyway, and then end up in a situation where we've got two oversized classrooms or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess I'd rather have undershot a little bit, but yeah, yeah. I, I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping that in mind when yeah. recommending school choice openings. Um, and, yeah, and I think last year too, I, I can't remember what, what the grades, but we even, I mean, we certainly had a lot of um, change and mostly in the, in the plus direction during, during the school year. Yeah, we, um, one year it was sixth grade yeah. where we had um, we had finished the previous school year with 23 fifth grade students yeah. and then started the next school year with over 30. Yeah. So, sixth grade students. So it, it fluctuates. 
Any other questions? Um, I'll try to uh, communicate and just maybe get on the schedule for a staff meeting again at the beginning of the year. Sure. To you, it's whenever it when when works out, doesn't be you know sometime in the near future, just to give, just to show my face. <laughs> um, all right, Superintendent Support, Dr. Carey. Thank you, Ben. Excuse me for shuffling my papers, but I was looking for the right one. And I do need to tell you that Michelle was down as um, the appointed yeah. Uh, collaborative. Yeah. And I was wondering if we do that now or when we wait to the new person yeah, comes on. That's a good idea. That's that. I think. Yeah, that's a good idea. So everyone has a chance to. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to be sure that I uh, took care yeah. of that. Appreciate can't it. call you up and oh, uh, I suppose I could. Yeah. And um, so my report is pretty simple. The um, the staff welcome back the annual uh, regional uh, Frontier Regional and Union 38 staff welcome back breakfast, which was prepared by Flossie and the Frontier Regional team. Um, with scrambled eggs, sausage, muffins, fresh muffins, and excellent coffee. And um, it was really uh, excellent. And I think every, you know, our teachers and our staff who worked so hard all year, I think it was just a great way to welcome them back and to let them know how much we appreciate what they do. We had our 20 year service ceremony on Tuesday, and I believe our sixth grade teacher, Ben, the sixth grade teacher was a 20 year recipient, was one of them. Yep, yeah. wonderful teacher, just wonderful. It was, it was great. Nice. And um, so it was pretty positive. And, and I'm, you know, it's my favorite thing is when things are positive. Uh, the administrative team and I met last week to discuss the possibility of piloting a blizzard bag program for this coming school year, this school year that we're in. I brought in resources and information from Gateway Regional School and from Mahar and Orange District, and they both engaged in it this year. And one of the um, uh, one of the requirements for Gateway, from I believe it was their school committee or someone said, what we want to know, you do it this year, you pilot it, and let us know what happens at the end of the year, how people did. So they did a complete survey afterward, and they shared the PowerPoint with us, and I shared it with my administrative team. And I can tell you that there were people, they surveyed teachers and parents, and there were people who just loved it, teachers and parents, and then there were teachers and parents who just did not love it. So we decided as a team that we would regroup, we would uh, do some more reviewing um, of information, researching how it goes this year with, with some other districts, and um, come back and, and if we plan to pursue it, we'll develop a, a quality protocol for the specific needs of Union 38 and Frontier. But we just didn't feel that we were ready to begin that surveying the parents and seeing how they would feel, surveying the teachers, and then we just weren't ready to put that amount of work into something that we're not 100% sold on. And perhaps this year we won't have six snow days. Is there any way eventually that we could take a look at the results of the surveys that you're mentioning? From Gateway? Yeah. Certainly, I'll send it to you. Okay. And I'll send it to all of you. They, you know, they just, I don't know if they're, they're continuing with it, so I'm not sure it was 50-50, but people need to be heard, they need to feel heard, and we, we need to um, take into consideration everything. So the administrative team this year felt, you know, we've, we're making some changes in different areas, and you can't do everything all at once, and these, this could be a big issue. Were, were, were the, the, like, main, uh, um, critiques of it? Uh. The, main, the parents' main thing was that um, they, sometimes the children needed a, assistance from the parents, right. the little littles. Not that you only <coughs> give them X amount by their age, so homework should be no more than 10 minutes per grade. So if you're in 10, first grade, you get 10 minutes homework. If you're in seventh grade, mm -hmm. you know, a lot more.
whatever. But, uh, and that's just an old school way of doing it. But some of the children needed help from the parents and the parents were like, we work all day, we come home, uh, my kids have been at the babysitters or I had to already make other plans for the child. Now I have to spend my night doing my other stuff plus this extra work that could have been done during the day, but they couldn't do it because they didn't have the resources. Because does this avoid, like, would it, it, is it in lieu of it actually being counted uh, as a missed day? Like, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's, I, mean, I so, can imagine that's a substantial. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's maybe mm -hmm. not the same as like a, well, anyway. Yeah, yeah, so, and the teachers simple. felt like giving children assignments. It's just about the little kids. The high school's a lot easier because it's a situation where we're working on, you know, there's going to be a snow day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What you need to work on, if there's a snow day Thursday, Friday, or Monday, you need to be working on this term paper we're doing on South America. And I need you to have, you know, parts A, B, and C done. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can do work independently. But it's the little ones that the parents just felt bad, some parents. And the teachers also felt that um, you can't replace a day with a teacher a, a right. full of instruction without right. you know some loss there. Yeah. And um, for me, the, the reason why I had just floated it out was because we have MCAS in March, April, May, and our snow days come before that. So we are losing some instruction and if they're working independently at home or and or with yeah. parent supervision, then it's not a complete loss that we make up in June after all that. But, you know, we don't live for the test, so it's, yeah. it's, it's a hard sell. So, um, and then there were teachers who loved it. Teachers, the students generally have five days to hand in from the snow day, hand in the work. And so the people say, well, how do the teachers get paid? They're not, they're not teaching that day. But they are because they're preparing the lessons. They're uh, advising students how to do it. They they are available to answer emails mm -hmm. to, from students or parents. You know during you know X amount like from 8:30 to 11 in the morning, and they have to correct it and mm -hmm. and make you know whatever you know mm -hmm. uh, comments and these things. But we just felt that we weren't ready to get out there, explain it all, help people understand. And then the biggest question of all was, what about the children who are special ed? Mm -hmm. So the students who are in substantially different programs, substantially separate programs, or the students who get a lot of support during the school day, how can we meet the needs of their IEP when we're not there? Mm -hmm. So then we just got into some, <laughs> like, yeah. okay, well, we'll be thinking about Maybe it. Maybe some more, yeah, yeah. learning, or, yeah. So, um, and I have been writing to the school committee regularly, um, you know, keeping you in communication. And I, these came from my thing. I'll be more visible in the buildings. Ben and I have made plans to meet here and visit classrooms every two weeks. And my long-term goal is to make it every week, which I think would be great. Um, and again, the superintendent's first year is always to go slow, learn the lay of the land, um, understand the values and traditions of the district, and make a vision and strategic plan for moving the district forward. The admin team and myself have been working on this strategic plan and this vision for, well, since last school year. And uh, before that, we took, again, as ben, ben said, we had some, the year that, that I came on, we had audits from the uh, DESE and we had an audit from CMSI and that information went together to make a list of improvements uh, that the curriculum coordinators have put together and then this year we took those and we actually put them on a strategic plan that we're, we're going to present to the school committees, all of them, on uh, October 5th, our joint school committee meeting. So um, that's, where, that's where we are right now. And it was a wonderful opening. The, the school year opened really well. I, I felt we were prepared. It was a very short summer. But particularly in Sunderland, I felt that we really gave a good push at the end of the summer. So I'm proud of the work that was done here. Thank you. Thanks. Questions?
right, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. second there. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you.